I hope y'all haven't forgotten that the real Boston is still here. And I don't know if they think a little gentrification, raising right prices, and new buildings are going to come down and push us out, but our voices are here and our bodies are too. And I hope in my heart that getting rid of us is not what you're trying to do, because if you get rid of us, Boston comes with us too. Hi, so my name is Alondra Bobadilla, and I am a student at Fenway High School, senior. I started writing when I was around 12, I'd say. Well, poetry more specifically. As a kid, um, and still now, I have a lot going on in my head at once. It was very hard at the time as a kid to um, get everything out that I wanted to say, and sort of my thought process gave me a lot of you know, anxiety. So writing for me became my way of release. It became my way to process my thinking. And then as I got older and as I started, you know, with my civics classes and stuff like that, learning more about, you know, political climates, social climates, you know, different aspects of identity, writing about those gaps between different ethnic and racial groups in this country, sort of where that clash comes in, the voice of, you know, Latin Americans specifically in conversations of race. So I, I definitely considered myself at that time and still now in many ways, sort of a voice for the voiceless. I am proud to be Latina, proud to have this language and these roots in my blood. And your opinion on my pride is not really my problem. It's okay for you to talk about my roots like you know the story better than I do. But when I do, it becomes a problem. Let us tell our own story because you stay telling it wrong. I think sometimes people see poetry, or I think the way I saw poetry in the classroom, you know, Shakespeare, like it, it was less about, you know, politics and civic engagement and, and social movements and more about like, you know, pretty words and relationships and ballads and sonnets and, you know, etc. which is completely untrue. You know what I mean? There's multiple people throughout history and, and just art in general that was used to make statements. The process to get the courage to apply for the Boston News Poet Laureate position was a weird one. I was going through a lot. Um, you know, I, I was trying to just focus on my academics. I wasn't sure what I wanted to do. I knew I wanted to do something, get involved in something. I just wasn't sure what it was. Until finally my friend was like, I have something I need to send you. You better do it. And she was like threatening me basically and sent it to my email and was just like, you need to apply to this thing. It was intimidating. I was very intimidated. One of the poems they were asking for was a poem about the city of Boston. And when I read that, I was like, do they want me to write about how I like the city and my roots to the city? Or do they want me to write about the things that, you know, are, are really happening? The issues that were bothering me here in Boston in particular, beginning with gentrification, my family is technically middle class, technically middle class. But, you know, with debt, whether it's student loans, whether it's other things, and then the fact that Boston is just so incredibly unaffordable, not just necessarily for people in housing, but just regular lower middle class families who are struggling. It, it often feels like Boston and Massachusetts doesn't give you um, adamant opportunity to really raise out of some of these situations. It almost just feels like more tax on top of more debt. And it, it was a topic that, it was something more that I saw and then I was able to understand when I looked it up, researched, etc. And then I started writing. Big buildings block my view. Condos that I will never afford are like a looming threat. I see faces I've never seen walking down dangerous streets with bright smiles as if they don't live beside poor mothers and fathers struggling to make ends meet. Yet right beside their scatter side lives a young couple or a college student that doesn't know this city like they do. Living in a luxury apartment that they only dream to move into with the five children that they can barely feed and the children's lips only know one word, hungry. And that was sort of the entirety of the process until the day I you know, got the title. <laughs> People were very pleased. They were very pleased with the honesty and a lot of them also felt like, you know, thank you for talking about the things that, you know, we've been trying to say in other settings, you know what I mean? And, and thank you for saying it, you know, with your words and, you know, there was I definitely do also believe that there were people who sort of considered maybe some of the roles that they play in, in that topic in itself and in the poem in itself. You know, there was other people who were like, and this has happened to me before with other work, you know, maybe you could have said this differently. And I'm like, no, <laughs> I'm like, no, I'm, you're not gonna censor me. So the advice that I give to young poets, both in my workshops and just in general, is to be authentic. I think that you can be authentic and talk about how you feel and still say it in a respectful manner 
but I don't think that you should censor yourself for anyone. And I think it's also really important that when you're using your art, that you also explain, explain it, use research and you, you know, you show that you can mix, you know, politics and civic engagement with art, with your explanations of your art. You know, art moves people. And when you're the same way that your art moved you when you first wrote it, when you first drew it, when you first danced it out, it moves the people that end up viewing it.